Hey guys, Frosty Knives here, back with another video. And we are just about a month away from the great Star Wars Expanded Universe review series that is going to start sometime in January. Um, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, but there, before we get into actually reading the Expanded Universe and going through the books and talking about them, um, there is one last video that I have to make about Star Wars and the Expanded Universe in general, and that is a video to talk about the 800-pound hut in the middle of the room when you talk about the Expanded Universe, and that is the question of canonicity, right? Is the Star Wars Expanded Universe canon? Was it ever canon? Why wasn't it canon? Why, why shouldn't it have been canon? Who thought it was canon? Was it just fan fiction? Was it just stories that took place in an alternate universe? What is the story behind the canonicity or lack thereof of the Expanded Universe? And why do some people, myself included, still say things like, well, it's still canon to me, damn it when people talk about the Expanded Universe, now rebranded Legends, in as far as Disney is concerned. But for us, it's a whole different thing. So, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the canon, if you will, of, of the Expanded Universe. But in order to do that, we have to go back. We have to go way back. We have to start at the beginning. Not in 1977, when the movie A New Hope came out. We have to go back further. We have to go back to 1976. About half a year before the movie came out. We have to talk about the book. Star Wars. From the Adventures of Luke Skywalker. By, by George Lucas. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk more in depth about the actual story when, when we read it. But, but this is where we have to start. So, some people may be surprised to learn, I was a little surprised to learn, that the book actually came out before the movie. So people's first experience with Star Wars would have been if they read the novel. Now, that seems like a little odd, right? We think about this. That seems a little odd. Why would you put the book out before the movie comes out? Well, back then, that, that seemed to happen a lot. I remember a lot of times, I think it happened with Poltergeist. I think it might have happened with Gremlins. I think it happened with Ghostbusters. There was a lot of times where the books would come out before the movie did. And people would read the books, sort of uh, uh, get a little introduction to the universe. And, and in a lot of uh, instances, the books really weren't um, weren't covering copies of the movie. Uh, that is especially true of, of Star Wars. Um, the books and the novelizations, they were usually based off early drafts of the movie. This was based off of an early draft of Star Wars. So you would read that, but it wouldn't be an exact translation for what you would see on the screen. Characters may be different. Names might be different. Places might be different. There were certainly a lot of things in this book that never actually made it into the movie. Um, even, even in the special edition versions of the movie, there were things that were still left out. Um, there's a lot, usually a lot more description, maybe scenes that weren't, uh, that were cut from the movie, maybe names that were changed, maybe descriptions of characters were changed. So, so that happened a lot. So, and that happened with Star Wars. This came out, I think it was November. It was 1976 and they dropped the book. Now, this says it was written by George Lucas. This was not written by George Lucas. This is very well documented um, by George uh, himself, who's gone on to say that he, George didn't write the book. This book was actually ghostwritten by science fiction author uh, Alan Dean Foster. Alan Dean Foster wrote this book. 
based on an early draft of the, of Star Wars. Slap George's name on it. George is very open about that. Alan is very open about that. There's no mystery. There's no bad blood. It's just a thing that happened at the time. It was ghost written. He put his name on it. And, and there we have it, right? So we got the book. And then six months later, we get the movie. We get Star Wars without A New Hope, right? Because that's what happened in the beginning. Um, so George wasn't sure at the time if Star Wars was going to be a hit. He didn't know. He was hoping it was going to be a hit, but he didn't, didn't know how people were going to react to it. He didn't know what was going to happen. And so he had a plan B. His plan B involved Alan Foster. So Alan Foster was contracted to write two books. He was contracted to write the novelization of Star Wars. Then he was contracted to write a second book. The second book that he wrote was this book, Splinter of the Mind's Eye by Alan Dean Foster. Those are the two books he was contracted to write. And this book was George Lucas's plan B. His plan B was, if Star Wars tanks, if it isn't the hit that I want it to be, if it isn't the hit that I hope it will be, if it doesn't make enough money for me to make a sequel to Star Wars, if this thing just flops at the box office, his plan B was that he wanted Alan to write a low-budget sequel. He wanted to write him to write a sequel that he could turn into a very low budget movie if 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 Star Wars tanked. Sort of like those old low budget science fiction movies you see in the you know 60s and 70s. That was his plan B. His plan B was his plan A was I got this this trilogy I want to write, but I don't know how Star Wars is going to be accepted. And if Star Wars tanks, my plan B is I want you to write me a low-budget sequel that I can then turn into a low-budget movie and we'll go from there. So Alan D. Foster did. He wrote Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Well, as you know, um, Star Wars was um, more than a hit. It was, it was phenomenal, right? Star Wars exploded. And that allowed George to write his sequel. That allowed him to write Empire Strikes Back, and that allowed him to write Return of the Jedi, because Star Wars did so well, and then Empire did so well, and the merchandising did so well, that they were able to do Jedi, so his, George's vision of this grand trilogy was actually re was re realized. But this book wasn't bad. This wasn't a bad book, right? And part of the merchandising that came along with Star Wars was... The, 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 the uppers got together and said, well, maybe we could do a couple more of these. Maybe we could write a few more of these, these books. People seem to like them. You know, just sort of kind of flesh out the universe. So they did. This, by the way, is actually sort of the true beginnings of what will eventually become the expanded universe. These were the seeds that I'm about to show you that what became, and the fruits became the expanded universe. So, Splinter of the Mind's Eye came out, and they said, well, maybe we could, we could, we could get a few more books. We could, we could have a few more books put out. So they did. So, after Star Wars, a trilogy came out. The Han Solo trilogy by Brian Daly. And these are the adventures of Han and Chewbacca. Um... Look at that, it says first time in print, right? First paperback publication. Um, Han Solo, from the adventures of Luke Skywalker, based on characters and situations created by George Lucas. So these books came out because people wanted more, and they gave us a trilogy of Han Solo books. All of these, by the way, we are going to be reading and reviewing, so do not fear. And that seemed to do okay. People seemed to like those. And then Empire came out. People still wanted more. So then we got a th another si a trilogy. Then we got the Lando Calrissian trilogy by L. Neil Smith. Now, there, there are three books in here. 
the, Ma the Mind Hop of Sharu, Lando Carissian, and the Flame Wind of Asian, and Lando Carissian, and the Stargave of Thonbaka. Since the Han Solo trilogy seemed to do well, people seem to like it, let's give people a Lando trilogy. So we got a Lando trilogy. This came out in 83. Right? Uh, again, from the adventures of Luke Skywalker, based on characters. So they started putting out some books back then. We got we got Splinter, we got the Han Solo trilogy, we got the Lando trilogy. People wanted all things Star Wars. We got a couple of TV shows, a couple of TV movies. We got some Ewok movies. We got Wicked and the Battle of Endor. We got another Ewok movie. We got a couple of animated shows. We got the Droids animated show. We got Ewoks animated show. People wanted more things than just the movies. They wanted to explore other things. What is this universe that George has created? And so... You know, they, they did all of those. The, 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 the Ewok movies didn't do as well, I think, as they wanted them to. And the animated series it was what it was. I have never seen the animated series. But I don't think those, this sort of lived up to the hype of the movies. And then Jedi came out. And then after Jedi, we didn't have anything. We had three movies. We had... One, we had three movies. We had the three novelizations of the movies. And then we had three, six, seven other books. Had a couple of TV shows. A couple of cartoons. A couple, couple of animated series. And that's all we had. That's all we had. We didn't have anything else. But people still wanted more. They still wanted more. George had ideas for the prequels. He had ideas for other trilogies, but I don't know if it was a money thing, a time thing. It just wasn't a right thing. I think he wanted to get this the level of CGI up further, the level of tech, the level of CGI up further than we had in the in the original trilogy before he did the prequel trilogy. Because trilogy. there were things that he wanted to do. He had ideas that he, he wanted to put on screen, but we didn't have the level of tech. We didn't have the level of special effects. We didn't have the level of CGI, so he waited. So he, he kind of put, put that stuff off. So, in the, so after 83, there was a drought, if you will. There was a drought of Star Wars movies. There was a drought of anything, really, Star Wars. And people wanted more. They wanted more. They just couldn't get enough of this. So then they made a decision. Lucasfilm made a decision. They said, well, we're not at a point where we can make movies yet. We don't have the tech, we don't have the special effects that George wants to make movies yet, but fans still want this, and you know, we don't want them to lose interest, so what can we do? Well, a light bulb went off, and they said, well, these, these, these books, they, they seem to do okay, maybe, just, just maybe, we could write some more books we could we could authorize some more books maybe we could put some more some more books out and 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 maybe we could draw you know keep people interested in star wars maybe get new fans maybe we may, may, maybe we could do that so they decided they they commissioned a trilogy of books and they found an author uh i don't know how well known timothy zahn was prior to him writing the Thrawn trilogy. But I can safely say, I think I can safely say that <clears throat> no matter how popular he might have been on his own, Star Wars really nailed his name to the map. Star Wars put Zahn really into the limelight. So they commissioned a book, ser trilogy, they gave it to Timothy Zahn. And in 1991, eight years after Jedi, we finally get Heir to the Empire. Now indulge me for a minute because I'm going to read to you the back of the book. The back of the book. This is where the idea of canonicity starts People start thinking along those lines. 
This is where it started. And here on the back of the book, it says, Now, for the first time, the authorized continuation of the legendary Star Wars saga, the most popular series in motion picture history, masterfully told by Hugo Award-winning author Timothy Zahn. Think about the word choice that they used when they wrote this book blurb. The authorized continuation. <clears throat> now we read that, us fans, and we went, oh, well, this is an authorized continuation. This is a, this is a sequel trilogy. So we got Heir to the Empire, we got Dark Force Rising, we got Last Command, we got a trilogy. So at least in our minds, our Star Wars fandom minds, we started thinking, we just got seven, eight, and nine. We got episode seven, eight, and nine, but 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 we got it in, we got it in book form. Now. When Lucasfilm and George authorized Timothy Zahn to write this book, this trilogy, they basically gave him carte blanche. They said, you can write whatever you want to write. You can write about anything you want to write. There's a couple of things you can't do, though. A couple of things you can't do, but you can do, you can do, outside of these couple of things we're going to tell you that you can do, um, you can't, there are a couple of things you can't do, you, the, 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 the universe is yours. Can't kill off any of the main characters. You can't kill off the main characters. Luke, Leia, Han, Lando, the droids, Chewie, all that stuff. Can't kill them off. You can't tell the backstory of, of Darth Vader, of Anakin Skywalker, because George had the idea of writing the prequels, right? So he said, you can't write about Anakin's backstory and Darth Vader's backstory. I am going to do that in the movies. So that was off the, off the table. And the other thing you can't write about is you can't write about Yoda. You can't you can't write about Yoda's backstory. Uh, that's that's for whatever reason Yoda's backstory was off the table as well, which is why we don't have the name of Yoda's species, which is why we don't have the name of Yoda's planet, which is why we don't really have a lot of story about Yoda and his race, because George said, "Nay, nay." We still don't have anything about Yoda. Really, really backstory-wise. But other than those things, other than not killing anybody off and don't talk about Yoda and not, not delving into Darth Vader's backstory, the world is yours. And so Timothy Zahn wrote, wrote what is phenomenal, what is a phenomenal trilogy. And it took off. And us in the Star Wars fandom, we accepted it. We accepted it as canon. Now, George has always said that um, the only thing that George ever really considered canon was the six movies that he put on screen. That's what he considered canon. George claims to have never read any of the books or doesn't know what goes on in the books. I dispute that because of how heavy-handed Lucasfilm was in the creation of the books and what you can and can't do about it. I kind of have the feeling that George knew a little bit more about what was going on in the books than he led, lead, let, was led us to believe. Certainly, a lot of the things that happened in the novels, in the Expanded Universe novels, wound up in the movie. I'll give you an example. Coruscant. The entire planet. The Imperial homeworld. Coruscant. That was created by Zahn. That was created in the Thrawn trilogy. Apparently, Lucas liked it because it wound up in the prequel trilogy. So, they may call say that this is not canon, but that never stopped them from cherry-picking what they liked out of these books and throwing it in the films. That was my digression. So, uh, back to the trilogy, though. The trilogy came out. Thrawn trilogy, and it was phenomenal. People loved it. I loved it. Everybody loved These were great books. And so Lucasfilm was like, well, well, we might be onto something here. We might be onto something. We know that this is 1991. We know the, the, the prequel trilogy is still at least a decade away, right? Phantom Menace didn't come out until 99. We know it's still a ways away, 
people clearly still want to 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 explore this universe so why don't we give them a universe in print form and this was like early attempts at building um a a, a um a universe right before the mcu and before things like that they said why don't we create a series of books right we'll make a series of books that will not only build on and agree with the canon of the movies, but it will also agree and build on the canon of all the other books. Now, what does that mean? That means that these books, for the most part, don't contradict the canon of the original trilogies, and each book was set to agree with each other book. So events in this book, in this trilogy, would ripple out and other authors would pick up and, 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 and it would sort of filter through the universe. So not only were we getting more Star Wars stories, we were getting Star Wars stories that agreed with the movies. We were getting Star Wars stories that agreed with all of the, with the books. I mean, they, Lucasfilm kept track of this right? You couldn't write something in this book that contradicted this book. It all had to flow because they were just building and fleshing out this universe. And so they did that for years. They did that. They put out book after book and it was agreeing with the movies and it wasn't contradicting the other books and it was fleshing it out. We were getting fuller stories. We were getting backstories. We were getting backstories of minor characters from the movies. We were fleshing out all kinds of stuff. So my question is this, if it's not canon, if, if Lucasfilm didn't care, right? If this, these were just stories written in the Star Wars universe and, and Lucasfilm didn't care about it, they just said, yeah, go, go ahead and write Star Wars stories. We don't care. You'll have your stories and we'll have ours. If they didn't care about it, why did they go through so much trouble to make sure that all these books not only agreed with the movies, but agreed with each other? Why were there so many rules? Why was Lucasfilm so heavy-handed and so micromanaging this universe? Why did they care? If they didn't think it was part of their canon. If, if they didn't think that these books and these stories were part of established lore, why did they give a shit? Why did they care that no one kills no one kills off Luke or no one kills off Lando? Why did they have all these rules? And so for almost a decade we got all these books. And the universe grew. Then the prequel trilogy came out. And then the books that came out after the prequel trilogy started incorporating the elements of the prequel trilogy. So then we got stories about the Clone Wars, and we got more stories about Vader, we got more stories about Obi-Wan, and then the, the lore grew, and then the lore grew, and then the lore grew. And nobody ever really said that it wasn't canon. We hung our hat on this. The authorized continuation of the Star Wars stories. Why would you say that? Just because Lucasfilm authorizes an author to write a book in their universe, they don't have to go out of their way to say this trilogy is the author the authorized continuation of, of, a, of stories. Authorized by who? By George? I don't know, by Lucasfilm, by who was ever in charge. It was authorized, clearly authorized by somebody, and it was clearly meant to be a continuation. So the, the evidence for the fact that this expanded universe used to be considered canon has grew with every book that came out, with every storyline that came out. With every book that agreed with all the other books and that agreed with all the movies for the most part. I mean, there are some contradictions, and that's that happens. But when there were contradictions in a book, they would go and retcon it. They would actually go and retcon the, tr the, 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 the contradictions, you know, in these books. And say, well, yes, that did happen, but this is why. Why bother going through all the trouble of retconning stories that aren't canon? That are just stories 
that are just fan fictions, that are just an author's idea of a Star Wars story. So this all grew, and it grew, and it grew, and we lived with it. We lived with it as canon for from 1991 until 2014 when Disney bought Star Wars. So we lived with it for 24 years of this universe growing, expanding, fleshing out stories that we loved as movies now became stories that we loved as books. And they went to all that trouble to make sure that they agreed. They went to all that trouble to make sure that they agreed with each other, that they agreed with the books. People, authors would have to go and get authorization from Lucas and from Lucasfilm to say, I want to write this story. Here's my idea. Can I do that? Yes, you can do that. No, you can't do that. Or yes, you can do that with these exceptions. Why? If it wasn't canon, why did they care? And then Star Wars, and then uh, Disney rolled around. And then Disney said, no, 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 no. You know, all those books, all these books that, that you, <laughs> no, he's, no, that's not canon. I mean, we've been cherry picking this for decades. No, no, this isn't canon. No, no, we're going to write our own canon. We're going to write our own universe books canon. So all of these books now become legends books. And we're going to write our own canon books. Well, if these books weren't canon in the first place, why the hell did Disney go around and decanonize them just so they could write their own canon? Why did Disney say, no, 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 no. These are just stories. We're going to call them legends now, and they're just stories. But we're going to write our own canon books. So the books that we write that come out under the Disney brand, the books that the authors write, those will be canon. But, but these will no longer be canon. Okay, well, if they were never canon to begin with, why did you have to make that announcement? Why go through that, pr that process why rebrand them as legends? Why? So, this is all circumstantial evidence, obviously, right? This is all sort of circumstantial. Will it ever hold up in, in a court of law? Probably not. But these are the reasons why longtime Star Wars fans believe that at some point, these books were canon. And that's why some of us still still hold true to the, this is still canon as far as I'm concerned. Because Disney just mishandled Star Wars so terribly. And that's a whole different video. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the canonicity of the expanded universe. That's why we believe it. That is sort of what we were told. Nobody ever really came out and said, these are canon. 100% these are canon. But they did come out and say they're authorized. They did come out and say that's an authorized continuation of the stories. They did come out and make sure that all the books agreed with each other. They did come out and make sure that all the books agreed with all the movies. They went to all that trouble. And to me, that seems like a lot of trouble to go through for books that are just stories written in your universe. You don't see Star Trek doing it. Star Trek has been writing pocket books has been publishing Star Trek stories for years. And nobody ever thinks they're canon. Nobody's ever said they're canon. And nobody ever really cared if they agreed with each other or not. They weren't building a universe. They were just putting out stories of Star Trek people, right? They never came out and said, these stories of the authorized continuation of the series, with some exceptions later on. Pocket, pocket books didn't do that. But Lucasfilm did and that is why I and millions of other people believe that this is canon. That this was canon at some point, And then that Disney said, no, 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 no. It's no longer canon. Um, our books are going to be canon. And these are just going to be nice little stories that you can read to make you feel good about yourself. To give you some happy feels. That's the evidence that I have. You can make your own, you know, decisions and your own assumptions on that. But as somebody who has 
read and lived with the expanded universe since 1991, has watched it grow and watched it flower and watched it grow into what it was, what it is. That's why we believe it was canon. That's why we call it canon. That's why we treat it as canon. We treat it with the same respect as the movies because the authors of these books treated their material with the same respect as the movies. And it's just all one big canon universe as far as a lot of us are concerned. But what do you think? I would love to hear what other people think about the expanded universe. Is it canon to you? Was it ever canon to you? Does it kind of make sense what I said about why we think it was canon at some point? What are your thoughts on the canonicity of the expanded universe? That's a good topic to think about as we head into the actual reading and reviewing of these books. Whew. So guys, that is my... That's my video on my thoughts of the canonicity of Star Wars Expanded Universe. Wonderful stories in this Expanded Universe. There are some wonderful stories. We are in for some treats down the road. There are some stinkers, like any series. Uh, but there's wonderful stories to be had, wonderful concepts, wonderful ideas. And I, for one, cannot wait to reread them again and to share my thoughts with you about... Uh, a topic that I have loved from all of my life. I have been a, a huge Star Wars fan for my whole life. So I'm really excited to reread these books and to talk about them and to share my thoughts and opinions about them with all of you. So guys, put your comments down below and let's have a, a conversation about do you think it's canon? Should it be canon? And was it ever canon? Why do you think it's canon? And why don't you think it's canon? So there's my my video, guys. Um, so go ahead and subscribe and hit a like, bu like button. Share it around. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell everybody who believes it's still canon. And tell everybody who, who never thought it was canon. Share it to everybody. Because all opinions are welcome here. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.